Good evening, everybody. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Mike Fisher. Um, I'm involved in the operations of Metro. Um, great to see so many people who've tuned in here. Um, what's been suggested that, that you might mute your microphone unless you're talking because uh, it gets rid of a lot of background noise. Um, and just be aware we're recording this because there have been a number of apologies and we want to make it available to, to all people um, at some stage tomorrow. <coughs> First thing we want to look at um, is the playing schedule, which should be coming up shortly. Um, just really to give you an indication of what's, what your season looks like. These... Sorry. So the afternoon cricket, you can see there in the blue, um, starting at one o'clock um, in, in column I, uh, you'll see there Div 3 to Div 7 will follow that, and Cavaliers will follow that uh, to some extent. The next column, column J, you've got uh, Cavaliers 2 and 3. Um, We've had terrific intake in the Cavaliers, or terrific number of registrations for the Cavaliers grade, with something like 30 teams. So um, we've got uh, section one, which has the better teams in it. And those who've opted into that in sections two and three uh, have been loosely seated based on last year's uh, performances. And we'll review that at Christmas. Essentially, it's uh, two grades of 12 and therefore there's 11 days prior to Christmas and 11 days after. So we'll be, uh, we'll, we'll review that if there's any. Um... No. No. It was last night. Oh, I was told it was Thursday night. We're on a Zoom at the moment. We're on a Zoom here. Yeah. So. No, it was last night. What club are you from? Oh, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it was last, it was last night. Yeah. Well, we got one okay. Right. Uh, so there are some aspects there. You'll see we've got um, Cavaliers. We've we've got them playing uh, on Thursday evening prior to show weekend. So that'll be a twilight, sort of kicking off at five thirty, um, and in the President's grade. On the same weekend, there's no matches for them at all. Uh, then when you look down to the uh, first game after Christmas, which is uh, the 8th of January, there's no Cavaliers grade for that, uh, for that Saturday. And then we move to Waitangi weekend, Waitangi Day, is the 5th. Uh, or that weekend, Saturday the 5th, Waitangi Day holiday is on the 7th. And on that day, there's also Cavs will be playing um, on the Friday night rather than the Saturday. So essentially there's... Mike, you keep dropping out. Hey, Mike, it's, um, it's Scotty from St. Albans. You're breaking up quite badly. Can you hear me, mate? Mike. Uh, yes, I can. So can you not hear that? Is that... Yes, not. So, so that's breaking up. You can't hear that clearly. Scott, are you there? Ross, can you? No. You, you, Mike. No, it's horrible. Okay, we'll just. Mike Harvey's on the job. We'll see what we can come up with. No, it's, it's like you're having a stroke. Ah, Jesus, that's prophetic. It, it's yeah, it's, ter um, it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. It's, it's quite bad. Um, maybe all those guys who are sitting on video, if they just cut themselves off, that might free up some bandwidth and perhaps help us, apart from you, obviously, Mike. Um, but if others can turn their cameras off, that might just help. Talk again, Mike, and let's see what happens. So, is that clearer? Can you hear more clearly there? So, we've been talking about the playing schedule and the various days of the three to seven. What's that like, Ross? 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's way better. Okay. Okay, we'll just very briefly summarise. There's, um, there's the kicking off on the 9th, of course, we lost that day with the council um, withdrawing the grounds on the 2nd. So the 9th, there's 21 days essentially that go through to uh, the 12th of March. And then on the 12th of March, we've got semi-finals and finals in the, um, after the three round robins. Each of the grades, uh, eight, eight teams per grade. <clears throat> And um, I explained just about the Cavs will have some uh, games on, Twilight games on a Friday or a Thursday night to sort of free up the weekend, which when, when a holiday weekend comes along. Um, and the only other grade not to play on a holiday weekend is the Presidents, which is on show weekend Saturday. There's no round for them. So that really covers the, um, the guys. I see some women signed up there. So just to explain, if we just scroll across on our playing schedule to, um, to the women's side of things. Can you hear me? You okay, Ross? Yep. Yeah, just something came up on our screen to indicate that it might not. So if you look on this um, side, you see, you'll see the Div Division One women there. Um, which is a, there's a variety of cricket there for them. In the blue, it's uh, when the magicians are playing in our club competitions, and when the magicians are away, that's the yellow competition. Um, the blue competition is when there are six teams, and uh, when the magicians are away, some of those players from those six teams will need to go up to play premier cricket, which brings it down to four teams, and hence the yellow will be played with four teams. Uh, the under-16 grade there is shown. That's got um, four teams in the grade, so we're pleased about that. And the social eights also has four teams. So women's cricket at this stage of the season, and we, we cross our fingers uh, until that actually gets going. Uh, there's, there's a good turnout of teams there. So we've got five in the Premier Women, six in the Div 1, four and four in the other two grades. Um, just on the premier grade, and it, it does impact on some of the other grades, the uh, magician's um, first-class program has increased, and that obviously impacts on our, our club cricket. So uh, in many ways, the primary competition or the premier competition for the women is the one day, but it's diminished down to uh, the stage seven or eight, eight days in the entire season. So that's, uh, that's a concern, but it's basically out of our hands because we've got to support the Canterbury team um, because of the, the general lack of numbers playing women's cricket at this stage. So um, are there any, any questions on the playing schedule for you this season? Draws will go up, the draws will be published for the afternoon grades on Monday as they would normally be published, which is obviously the Monday prior to the first playing day, the original playing day, which was the 2nd um, of October. Okay. Um, so just to go through some um, routine stuff, just a reminder, and many of the clubs are onto this, um, the need to get transfers through. Guys can't play for their, a new club if they're transferring until um, we've received the completed document and signed off on that and returned it to you. So just be aware of that, please. Um, and as I say, the club administrators are, are on the ball there. Um, one, of the, um, one of the issues ongoing issues we've had and it um, it was probably at its worst last year last season was the the behavior of some of the that was exhibited in some of the grades in the afternoon grades where you had player umpires um, which puts pressure on your own teammates within those within those grades um, we we have two processes we have a code of conduct process which usually it's more severe and it's usually coming out of grades which have officially appointed umpires, but not necessarily so if the, um, if the uh, alleged offence is sufficiently serious. And the other form of uh, uh, 
the deals of behaviour is the disputes. Um, and that's, we ask that that's sort of settled in the first instance by the two captains who have total responsibility for running the game, um, which is set out in the handbook um, and actually uh, in the laws of the game under the spirit of the, uh, spirit of the game. So you really need to familiarise yourself with the handbook. Um, we want every one of the captains every one of you to have a handbook. They'll be distributed at the chairman's meeting on Monday. It's also online. And uh, it's, it's a really important document for you to understand um, what relates to your grade. So it's obviously divided into sections. Sections two and three are uh, pertinent to your grade, plus section five, which deals with afternoon cricket. Um, within section, three, there's a code of behaviour, which is basically a one on, 101 on, on, on what you should do when you arrive at the game. And it should be uh, just a, a, something that you, do, you deal with easily and you've done for over the years. But the fact that we've got to write it out in monosyllabic words tells you some of the problems we're having. So um, we've asked the clubs in the last couple of years, the chairman of the clubs, to go over that document which we've circulated with all the team captains in that person's club and then we require him to email us and sign off that he's gone over it so it's, it's difficult for us to deal with it firsthand we believe the issue is uh, is a club issue and the the discipline of the players of that club uh, is their responsibility and then it falls back on the captains to ensure that his team's behaviour and the supporters of his team's behaviour is uh, appropriate as set out in the spirit of the game. So it's really important that you go over that and you understand it and that you, um, and that you seek it out and just refresh yourself. Um, as I say, it's, it's most of it we just do naturally and it's, it, it, uh, it shouldn't be required, but it is. So understand your responsibility, please. Um, what constitutes fair and unfair play. Um, and then there's just some general how we think the game should be played in terms of uh, personal interaction. Um, just be aware also in the first um, first local rule of that section three that it, um, it outlines the, the power, if you like, that um, we have in terms of imposing penalty on people who um, who uh, don't behave accordingly, like loss of points, fine, uh, suspension of an individual player or, or a team um, or a team supporter in that respect as well. So just be aware of that, please. We had to had two or three nasty instances last year, um, which, which led to suspension of individuals and teams. Um, Just to push on from that, um, or just in terms of code of or dispute process, uh, the complaint has to be with us, has to be lodged with us um, on club letterhead, and obviously we accept um, email, but it needs to come through uh, club official, uh, you know, club committee man. We just don't want random um, players sending something off complaining about the other team. Uh, you just need to know the process and look at look in the handbook and you'll find what how it's outlined and the timing of it so it's not um, submitted after the deadline. Um, Crick HQ, Mike, you might want to talk a wee bit about Crick HQ. Yeah, well, um, evening everyone. Uh, so as you'll be aware from the last two or three seasons, um, all of your results need to be put into Crick HQ as full scoreboards. And the um, starting point for that is obviously going on at the moment with getting your players registered and set up in their teams. Uh, we've just, we keep an eye on that from our end and there's some, some really good progress and, and lots of registrations coming in. Um, so if you can just remind your teams um, that they do need to get their registrations sorted out on Crick HQ um, in the next sort of week or so, so the clubs can set up the teams and be ready to go for the first Saturday on the 9th of October. Um, many score live at the games on devices and others uh, do a pen and paper and then enter 
the full scoreboard once you get home. So you have those two options, but it's really important to get all of your players registered, um, you know, transfers sorted out so we can, we can get players in the right clubs and, and be ready to go for the start of the season. Um, every every week, we're, we're happy to help, um, you know, if, if a wrong result goes in or um, the wrong bowling figures go in or wrong batting scores, you don't need to re-enter the whole scoreboard. You can just drop either Mike or myself a message and we can make some alterations at our end. So um, please just, just use us to do that. Don't feel you have to spend another half an hour, 20 minutes putting in a scorecard again because you've made one mistake. Uh, we can we can make those changes easily at our end. So please feel free to get in contact. Any questions about Crook HQ? Okay, got it. thanks, Mike. Um, the just the last thing I've got deals with the helmet policy, which um, has been. Um, which has come out from New Zealand cricket, and it did co cause some stir when it initially came out. Um, and since then, the um, associations have gone back to New Zealand cricket to to try and um, to ease up on it slightly. So, what what that what the policy is? If you're under nineteen, if you're an under nineteen player, whether you, whether you're at uh, at school or you've left school, but you're playing under, you're under nineteen, you must. It is compulsory to wear a helmet. Uh, when batting and in certain fielding positions um, and, and keeping. If you are 19 and over, it's strongly recommended, but not compulsory. So uh, the decision is yours there. So one hand, it's compulsory, yeah. 19, uh, under 19 yeah. and 19 and over, strongly recommended. Um, one of the issues we had last year in one of the games was, in fact, um, and not every team was aware of this or every player was aware of this, but uh, from Div 4 down, um, it's a no ball if the ball is bowled over the shoulder. So you, it, it, there's essentially no bounces bowled from those grades down. Um, and obviously, if in the event of it uh, being over the shoulder, then it's called a no ball. So just be aware of that, um, and it's in the it's been in the handbook for a number of seasons. But uh, you perhaps just need to refresh your players, and particularly new players, that uh, the, the the use of the bouncer is above shoulder is uh, illegal. It's a local it's a local uh, law, uh, rule. So look, guys, that's basically it from our end. Is there anything that you want to raise or? Um, you're unsure of as we enter into the season. We've got. We've uh, got can you hear me, Mike? Just, we've got uh, about ten minutes left. Hello, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thanks. Oh, sorry, I was on unmute. Uh, just on the admin side, I just uh, I was just recommending that if uh, if there's any minor changes to be made. Rather than going to you guys, can the admin person can change it if it's a mistake? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about um, Crook HQ there. That's uh, right. That's right. Yeah. At, at the moment, um, the answer to that is no. Once you submit a scorecard, uh, no okay. changes can be made. Yep. And we um, have raised okay. this with New Zealand Cricket because we often get the question, well, we just push the wrong button somewhere. We just want to go back. And do it um, at the moment. Yep. That that can't be done um, for whatever reason they've decided. So you just need to forward those, even the minor changes through to That's us. You guys. We're, yep. we're happy to do them for you. Okay, no problem. Yep. Thank you. And one more while while I'm on the speaker. Any any suggestion I'm trying to make for uh, field restrictions? Do you want to introduce in the third grade, in one or two matches or something like that? What was the first part of the question, Bo? Field restrictions. And... Oh, do we need field restrictions? Um, it so has just been... if, if you want to introduce, if you want to introduce for one or two games or one or two things, you know what I mean? Just to make it a bit different. Well, we don't have that written into any of our playing conditions in those grades. But are you saying okay. that within a specific game, 
Just the two captains. Yeah, agreed. yeah. Just, Is that what just you're for the trial, trial. Just for the trial. Yeah. Um, one, well, or two, we, one or two games. We might. I mean, normally at this stage of the season, it's too late. This sort of thing we would. Okay. Would we would raise in the. Um, in the meeting in April, which is a review meeting. This is more just an information and a clarification okay. meeting, if you like. Yeah, but yeah. maybe yeah, towards yeah. the end of the season, Bale, where yeah. we don't have, say, semi-finals and finals, you might introduce something to see how it, how it pans out, uh, if it's okay. successful. But, uh, okay. but no. One of the things we do, we, we require really or strongly encourage, is that mm. captains at the... At the toss, they discuss yep. what con what they constitutes a wide and so on, so that both teams are on the same page. Um, okay. And then you then you're sort of avoiding some dispute perhaps during the game. So you really need to two captains, you know, yeah. talk through it, sort out whatever might mm. what what an issue might be or your concern, and uh, so that it's dealt with there rather than, you know, getting to a tight part of the game at five o'clock when, uh, when some dispute might occur. Uh, yeah, yeah. As, no, the, as some no, of you know, we, the, or you, you all should know, um, the, there is a club contact role on the Saturday, which is uh, me, um, who's available if you ring up if there's a concern or there's a squabble going on, um, and I can either answer it on the phone or come out to the ground and sort it out. Um, it's yeah, yeah. slightly limiting this year, and so much as that I'm, um, I've been seconded um, for to Canterbury Cricket for some work, um, yeah. which is going to take up some Saturdays. Um, essentially, I'm overseeing um, the games played at Hagley Oval, the first class games. Um, so, if, if there's a conflict there, then obviously I can only be at Hagley, but I can answer the phone and um, and sort yeah. it out over okay. the phone that I might not be around the grounds. On other days, when Canterbury, when Hagley Oval is not being used. First class, then um, I'll be around the traps as normal. No problem. All right, thank you very much. So what we'll do, we'll put you some su suggestion for the field re restriction for the next season. How about yes, that? excellent. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah. done. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else there, guys? That um, everyone's happy. Rules will be up Monday. Um, for the yep. first round on Monday, guys, there won't be any ground allocation, so it'll just be um, team A plays team B, um, and then the ground allocations will go up on uh, Monday, the fourth fourth of October. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're just right. running out of time at this end. So look, thanks very much. It's been a great turnout there, and. Um, if you've got any concerns, you, you flick through an email if there are genuine concerns. Otherwise, um, look forward to you getting kicking the season off on, on the nights um, with some uh, excellent cricket. Thanks for attending. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Cheers. Mike. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Thank you.